Hello everyone and welcome to this year's edition of the Search for Nigeria's Best Dishes brought to you by Nigeria's number one best-selling dishwash liquid, Morning Fresh. Our theme for this year is Old Niger Dishes where we get to showcase all the beautiful delicacies from across Nigeria from the west to the east to the north and to the south. We ask that you guys rep your region by showcasing all your favorite Old Niger dishes and the responses were amazing. But you know, we could only pick a handful of you guys to be part of the show. Check them out now. I'm Uti Olabife from Ogbumosho North Local Government, or your state. I'm excited to be representing the western part of Nigeria. My name is Pamela Eze. I'm from Mbitoli Local Government in Imo State. I'm representing the eastern region. My name is Loretta Irabo, and I will be representing the southern part of Nigeria, which is the Edo and the Delta. My name is Nick Maji. I'm from the north central Akwanga Local Government. Now go day. Come guys, let's check out the guys from the north. In this competition, I came in to put out that dish that my mama used to do when I was growing up. This dish I'm going to cook today is called Miyambusheshen Kuka Kubewa, the Twoishin Kafa. Today, I'm going to prepare Miyambusheshen Kubewa, the Twoishin Kafa. This is my palm oil that we're going to use. I have the seasoning here. I have the Bushishen Kubewa. Bushishen Kubewa, by the way, is a dry okra. It's normal, the fresh okra, you get it, then you kind of put it in the sun dried and get it into a powder. Then we have the dry fish that will go with it. Some chopped onions and peppers that will go into it. Normally, we in the north, we prefer using the uh, biscuit bones than the proper meat. So that's exactly what I'm going to use to cook. And this is a tuon shinkafa, it's a special kind of rice. It's not any kind of rice that you use to make tuon shinkafa, which I will begin the process of following the journey and let me put you through how we prepare it. I appreciate the opportunity given to me to participate in this uh, search for Nigerian dish. We put on the uh, pot on the fire, put on the light, light the pot, then you get all your wash uh, biscuit bones and take them back into the fire. Add in your chopped onions and peppers to it. Allow it to simmer a little bit. When I first got the call to come, and I think truly, my mother from Agrip has spoken to me because I was wondering which of the uh, old dish that I enjoyed my, uh, when I was a little boy, that I would bring out back. And I think that it's uh, been extinct disappearing that the Gen Z's have never even tested that soup. Then you allow that to simmer a little bit by covering it. Then after a little while, you add in your water into it to boil together to have a stock that you have to use in making the uh, uh, soup with it. Usually not that kind of food soup. It's not that kind of soup that you have to fry the oil and make it, all the oil goes in raw, so it retains all the nutrients that the oil got. It never got over fried and get burnt out of place. So you do the stock all together then you add in your oil. Dry okra, once you add into your stock, it boils and thicken. That make it, that will stick to your swallow that you want to eat together with it. So that's the process we're going to. So we'll allow the meat to simmer a little bit, and then we'll take it off from there. I find out that it was very difficult for them to get the dry okra for me, which means it's not a, a common soup or a ingredient to find around because people have lost thinking about it. But eventually it came and I'm happy that they found the dry okra. I was able to put my ingredients together and did the cooking to showcase that dish. All right, I think our meat is a little bit steaming, so we now to have some of our seasoning to it. So this is salt I'm putting into it to steam together with it. Then I have one or two cubes of our seasoning cubes with together with it. Usually you scramble it, not to let it lumpy, because when it gets lumpy, it stays there. Sometimes you have to find the so you season that with it and stir it a little bit. The entirety of the soup is in here, so you allow the meat to steam a little bit, then you add some water to it to get the stock out of it. So we cover it a little bit for some few minutes, then we Hi. add. Hi, Majid. Hi. Hi, very well. Good to see you. Yeah, well done. Thank well you. Done. Well done. Um, Nakwana, did I get it correct? Yes. <laughs> <All right. laughs> but actually, it's really like in Aini. 
Naini. Yes. Okay. When I saw Tolani coming in, the most thing that catches me more when she came in her that her house are tires, then I feel I'm home already. So what is Majid cooking for us today? Well, I am doing Mi Ambushe Shen Kobe or the Tuan Shin Papa. What that means in uh, it's uh, dry okra soup okay. with a rice uh, swallow okra. Dry okra and rice. Yes, you do that together, you make the rice into uh, whatever the swallow that everybody that call or the uh, I think the Yoruba part of the country call it okele. Mm -hmm. In in the northern part they call it tuo. Tuo. Okay, okay. So any kind of swallow. Any kind of swallow in Nigeria. Well. This is actually the first time I am learning this. Wow, so, I'm yeah. I am grateful for this opportunity, and that's the opportunity I'm looking out for, so that I can portray such kind of our dishes out to every part of Nigerians to see. Yeah, okay, a mixture of rice and okra is actually very interesting because, you know, that's the diversity of having different meals from different regions and all that. And I cannot even wait to have a taste of what you are currently cooking. So, uh, from your ingredients, I can see something really strange because I've not seen this before. What do we call this? This one is called Busheshen Kubewa. Busheshen Kubewa. That's dry okra. Busheshen is dry. Busheshen is dry. Okay, so you, you blended this? Yes. You dry the okra, then so you're going to pour it. So you're going to pour it. Man, I cannot wait to have a taste of this, guys. I really, really appreciate to see that you test the northern food and. And you know, it's quite interesting that you are male and you are so comfortable doing all of this. When I was cooking it, it was more emotional for me because that's what my mom usually cooks for us most often because it's easy to be made. So most often she whip it up easily for us to have our meal when we're back from school or we're back from the farm. Did you learn it or is this something, you know, you grew interesting and all of that? Well, I, like I will ever say, we are more of male in my uh, family. Oh. So with uh, my mom going, like I keep saying about, I love this uh, soup because that's what my mom used to do it. And that brought me back to memory to return back her into life in my space. So it's what she taught us doing. So when we're growing up and you know, the, the most exciting thing that I'm happy to do this today, because usually in the North, nobody believes the man's supposed to have a business in the oh, yeah, kitchen. Exactly. But then today, yeah, I was going to say um, that yeah, I personally I'm, find it very appealing to see a man in the kitchen. Yeah, but, Can you quickly run me through um, everything you've added now? Yeah, oh. At the moment, I have my uh, biscuit bone. I told you like in the North, we do more of biscuit bone than the real meat proper. Right. So biscuit bone is cooking to get tender. So I will now add all other ingredients to it. Like I said, in the notes, but we have a healthy meal that we cook. Our palm oil is not only fried, it's only put back into the stock, cook, and when you find out the stock, the meat is tender, every stock is well seasoned, then you add your bushishen kubiwa, and voila, the soup is ready, wow. waiting wow. for the tuition wow. company. Interesting, interesting. Well done, Majid. Thank so you. I'm going to allow you to cook your food and come back and have a taste. I cannot really wait to have a taste wow. of what you have Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. By the way, your tires look great. Thank you. So am I getting a name? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Okay. I will name you Hajia Soronia. So guys, I am officially Hajia Soronia. See you. <laughs> See you. Thank you very much. When I saw Tolani coming in, the most thing that catches me more when she came in her that's her house are tires, then I feel I'm home already. Alright, so now our uh, the meat is tender. We have our, all our meat on our biscuit bone. It's already tender, the stock is there, well seasoned. So we add some little more of the crayfish to it, just little, not too much of it. Actually, the uh, house people are no more of the crayfish, they are more of the fish itself, but you just have because it's coming to this and so we're adding that to it. And here is our dry fish going into it to cook with the stock all together. You have to cook for some few minutes. After cooking for some few minutes, we add our palm oil to it. The steam's boiled, then we're taking it with our uh, which is a dry okra and the soup is ready to be eaten then we'll now begin the tuition cover which is already almost ready we we'll just start boiling it when it's cooked we we'll stir it and make a, a lump out of it and it's ready to be served so we have to start our tuition kafa, which is tuition rice so the water is on the fire we have our rice there we'll now add it inside to allow it cook while the soup process is going on. Even as I put I put the water to get hot, let me add other ingredients on the soup so that we get it ready about the same time they all come out from the fire. So here at this time, like I said earlier on, uh, palm oil is always put uh, raw into the stock that you are cooking. 
Now all these depend how much palm oil you want into the uh, the miam bushishen kubi or that's the dry okra. Some even in some family, if you go in the north, they prefer doing it without even the oil at all. But mostly you did just need the oil for its flavor and nutrients. So now we have the oil. What is left for us now is just for it to cook a little bit. Then we add our bushishen kubi and our soup is ready waiting for the washing cover to be ready and be eaten together with it. All right, so our uh, water for the rice steam is a special kind of rice. You don't use every rice for two rice or two washing cover. So here you put it back into the water, allow it to boil. Yes, I'm doing that, so we allow it to cook like you're cooking the normal rice. Thank you. So in the, when the rice is already cooking, our stock for the soup is ready. And here we have our dry okra, which we add to it. Try to stir it all around so that it don't go lumpy. So just allow it to simmer for a little while. Then we'll bring it out. We already had everything on the fire. The soup is simmering, cooking well, the rice is still cooking, so we need to tidy up our kitchen and get ready for other service. So I thank God to us having our morning fresh that we're using, tidying up our place. Just a little drop of it on my uh, kitchen spots and bring you this lot of ladders for you. I'm not always confident standing before crowd. How about camera coming around me? This is the first time that I am having cameras all over me cooking food. I usually just do my things in the kitchen, prepare food and just serve my family. We eat together and enjoy ourselves. But this time around, I'm having a lot of cameras and people around me. I was apprehensive and tense at the beginning of my cooking. But after some time, once I immediately started, I just feel I got that confidence and just put out my food there and I'm grateful that it came out the way I wanted to come out. It came out tasty and looking nice presented. So we can take the soup out of the fire and still wait till our uh, swallow is ready, our tour rice. So you can see the soup is ready for us to eat. Tour rice is ready now, we just to mold it and have it to be eaten. So usually, we in the north, we have this wonderful calabash that we try to use in molding our swallow whenever we're passing it. So here is a mi and kubiwa with some biscuit bones and nice beef to go with it. Majid, you have brought down the entire cooking and this looks absolutely delicious. Wow, thank you very much. I, I cannot I, wait to have a taste. Let me sit down first. I promise you that you it's going to be an exciting meal for you to eat this day. So I want to ask, um, for everyone that cooks this soup, this is exactly how it looks? Yes. Miyam Bushishe Kubewa. 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 I tried. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god! <laughs> that is true. This is absolutely delicious. Wow. Thinking, will she test and complain about it? But when she tested it, wow, it was great for And I'm so happy that I'm able to bring out this dish out and put it out there. That just tell everybody, let's uh, no waste our okra. We can dry it and use it anytime. Absolutely so much. I, I, delicious. I'm so happy that you love guys. It. You need to try this recipe. This is for real and it's coming from Chef T. Chef T says you need to try this recipe. I might just finish this before the end of this course because it is too, too yummy. Well done, Majid. You Thank really, you really very did much. good. I with appreciate this. that. Well I'm done. so happy well that you love the my my mama mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, soup that she used mm -hmm. to grow me up with. Mm -hmm. Guys, it's been such an exciting episode. So tell me, what did you enjoy most about this episode? Please like, comment, and share with your family and friends. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode of the Search for Nigeria's Best Dishes, brought to you by your favorite dishwashing liquid, Morning Fresh. I remain Chef T. See you next time. Bye.